What's going on everyone? This is Dave from Smart Fitness and today we're back again with another supplement review video. This time it is on Progenadrex from Predator Nutrition. Uh, it is a fusion supplement and according to this it's a nuclear powered nutrition. I'm not sure what that means but hey. So in it, it has a proprietary blend, hmm, sorry to be suspicious, of Anacyclus perithium DC root in a 5 to 1 ethanolic extract. It has creatine HCL, R alpha lipolic acid, disodium phosphate, and laxoginin. And then it also has biotin. Um, and then other ingredients, just rice flour and magnesium stearate. So the suggested use is six capsules a day. And essentially what it's claim to fame is, is that you perform shorter workouts more frequently. So rather than three hour and a half workouts, you perform four or five 45 minute workouts to aid in increasing your muscle mass, basically putting on size without having a lot of fat gains per se. So let's dive right into this. First and foremost, I got some notes here on the side. Uh, so if I'm looking over, that's just re-getting myself organized here. So first and foremost, it's a proprietary blend. As you guys know, I would hope, that creatine usually, especially as a monohydrate, is taking around five grams. So the entire proprietary blend here has 2,829 milligrams, an entire serving, which is those six pills. So right then and there, you kind of have to be wearisome. And again, with HCL, creatine HCL being the second ingredient, it means it's not the highest dose in it. The highest dose is the uh, Anacyclus perithium DC root extract in a 5 to 1 ratio. So based on that, right then and there, you know you're not getting 5 grams. But that is okay because with creatine HCL, a lot of research has suggested that having lower doses, anywhere between 1.5 to 5 grams of creatine HCL, because of it being more basic to your body, is actually beneficial or good at that dose. You don't really need to go above that five gram like you would with monohydrate. So let's just break it right down, each ingredient, if it actually works, and then my opinion. So first and foremost, we're gonna start with biotin. What is biotin? It is a B water soluble vitamin. Now, I didn't actually know this, but it's used because of its enzymatic complexes to break down protein, carbs, and fats. So basically what that means is it's going to help you break down your protein, carbs, and fats in the digestive process so when it says for you to take six pieces or six uh, tablets, sorry, uh, before you work out and have it with a high carb and high protein meal, that's essentially why. So it's allowing you to break down better and better absorb in the GI tract. And that also explains why you have to take it every single day as well. Um, it supposedly helps with uh, thinning of hair, fatigue, dry skin, and burning nails, none of which applies to this product. But Research suggests that having high doses of biotin, which in essence this uh, 1,998 UGs uh, is, because the recommended daily value, or upper limit rather, isn't entirely established, so hyperdosing may not actually do anything per se, as long as you're not in a deficient state. So for having biotin in this supplement, it's hard to say if it's actually helping you or if it's just kind of you're peeing it out like you would with other water soluble vitamins. Next, we've got creatine HCL. So as I just discussed about creatine HCL, it is able to work in lower doses. Why? Because of the fact that it's more of a pH corrected creatine. It's a little bit more basic, so it's less acidic, and it is absorbed better in the gastrointestinal tract. So creatine, for its ori original use, as I've had a video talk about before, I'll post a link in my description, as well as above there, I'll have a clickable link. But Essentially, creatine is used for helping with ATP production, so you can work out longer, faster, harder. The whole saturating your muscles thing, yeah, it kind of does that, but that's more so indirectly with the fact that you're supposed to be having increased water. And if you're going to have increased water you're, with a high carbohydrate diet, you're going to be holding and retaining more water regardless. So creatine itself might indirectly aid in that, but it's not the cause of it. So... Um, Essentially, what creatine is doing is it's uh, taking ATP and allowing you to shuttle it for extra times of le an extra length of time for anaerobic exercise. So, imagine you have your ATP, you use it, and then it becomes a phosphate structure. I'm not going to get too deep into the uh, uh, chemistry behind it, but essentially, uh, 
what creatine will allow you to do is maintain that ATP a little bit longer. So by having this HCL creatine, it absorbs into your digestive tract longer, or faster rather, and you're able to reuse it quicker and faster and longer. So I understand why HCL is used. So again, that could work, could not work. Depends on the individual. Now, next we're going to talk about the Anacyclus perithium DC root at a five to one ratio of ethanolic acid extract. What the hell is that? Let me tell you guys, I had no idea what that was. So what did I do? I went to the Predator Nutrition page where I bought this to see what they actually had to say. And uh, they did a good job of essentially selling it as this amazing product that's going to help you. The thing is, there isn't a ton of research on it. Outside of that, I went to Google Scholar, I went to ResearchGate. It's very limited in what you have for human research. There's a lot of rat-based studies, but that doesn't necessarily transfer over. I mean, it might with SARMs and anabolics and pro-hormones, but that's a completely different subject for another day. So essentially, what they had on Predator Nutrition, I'm going to read the summary that they had. Um, the extract in animals, not humans, showed to resemble the sexual behavior of high testosterone. So the only thing that I can come up with that is because it boosts the synthesis of testosterone, potentially, it doesn't really say why. Um, but again, with being in animals, it's hard to say it's actually even going to do that in humans. So, upon doing more research um, on places like WebMD and um, Supplements Now, stuff like that, um, this, uh, this uh, whole Anacyclus perithium extract actually does seem to help with the uh, reuptake and uptake of glycogen into the muscles rather than the liver. So, in that respect, that does make sense. So, essentially, You've got the biotin that's going to break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. You've got your creatine HCL that's going to help you with extra energy. And now you've got this uh, extract root that's going to help you reabsorb the carbohydrates into your muscles rather than your liver where it could be stored potentially as fat. So long story short, having a high carb meal with high protein it should theoretically aid in increasing the uh, synthesis of carbs and creatine. Next... Um, is the R-alpha lipolic acid that it has in this. This product in itself does not do a whole lot. It's more of a synergist type of action with other products, uh, kind of like Lexogenin. And, but long story short, when combined with Lexogenin and apparently with Biotin, uh, they both produce some sort of effect. Uh, it, obviously, it's a separate effect, so I'm just going to read here what the claim effect is. So with Biotin, RLA, or R-alpha lipolic acid, supposedly increases the absorption of creatine, while lexoginin, as it's uh, an anti-inflammatory property, it increases the ability for an anti-inflammatory to function. So my guess is on how this would work is essentially it's allowing you to eat more without getting bloated so you don't have that inflammatory property. Um, and then at the same time, the creatine HCL being at a lower dose, you're able to more readily absorb it so you don't have to take as much. So you're already taking a lower dose, and then it just kind of works together in that respect. Um, but at the same time, so what is our ALA? According to WebMD, it is uh, used to reduce cellular damage. That doesn't necessarily help at all with uh, muscle building or supplementation. So in theory, it could make you feel like you're going to last longer. So if you're going to have less cellular damage, you may not feel your muscle hurting or fatiguing as much so you could train longer, but there's not a whole lot around it saying whether or not it will work with the whole creatine aspect and it will act as an anti-inflammatory with lexogen. So again, you just kind of have to be wearisome there. Um, again, it goes back to the whole like, rats versus human studies. <sighs> Continuing on, we've got disodium phosphate. Uh, Again, this could pretty much just be used for what can be assumed as to help with creatine uptake. If you guys haven't noticed yet, there's kind of a common denominator here, getting creatine to be reabsorbed and used as much as possible, as well as the carbohydrate reuptake into the muscles. So essentially, sodium in and of itself helps with creatine uptake into the muscles. So it all kind of works as a synergistic action. And finally, we've got laxogenin. Again, I'm going to have you guys refer to the description that I have below where I have a specific video talking about my experiences and the claimed effects versus scientific proof of Lexogen, and I'll put a link up top there as well. But essentially, the product is basically a plant-based steroid, a class of brassinal steroids, and 
It's been linked with other pro-hormones used together, but by itself, it's more of an anti-inflammatory property, and that seems to be what it's doing here. I could be wrong, but it's not. A, I'm not entirely sure about if it's actually doing anything aside from increasing protein synthesis. But if protein synthesis is actually increased and carbohydrate up, reuptake into the muscle is actually occurring and creatine HCL is actually being reabsorbed through the digestive tract, then it is possible that everything here is happening the way it should. So again, there's a lot of potential is, ifs. I can only go based on what I've heard and seen uh, and read, but I haven't actually tested myself, so it's hard to actually know. Okay, so we actually have to change location. There was uh, somebody doing some stuff in the other room and it was causing a little bit of loudness. Anyways, so my final thoughts on this product is quite simply this. Be aware of what you're consuming. Don't expect anabolic steroid-like results. It claims it'll increase in strength. I found my strength increased. It claims that you will be hungry all the time. I wasn't really much more hungry than I would normally am. Um, quite frankly, once I started eating, I never want to stop eating. So I can't say that it was this product for sure that made me hungry because I'm just always hungry. I didn't notice a whole lot of size, but I did notice that I actually got leaner, even though I've been eating more calories. Each day I've been having about 100 to 150 calories more per day. So in essence, yes, I am eating more. Yes, I am getting stronger. No, I do not realize that I'm getting bigger. Luke, can you speak on it? Do I look like I've gotten any bigger in the course of uh, this time that I've been running it? At most, mm -hmm. I look leaner. Yeah, I'd say leaner for sure, but bigger, I don't know. Yeah, so that's essentially my take on it. The reviews on Predator Nutrition, you kind of have to be weary some of it because that's really the only place that has a ton of reviews. And their reviews essentially say that it's a 5 out of 5 product, everything's amazing in it. But as any good consumer knows, you kind of have to be weary of that kind of shit. Because quite frankly, it could be fake, fake, it could be false advertising, it could be um, people from the website just writing random stuff like that themselves to boost sales. Alright ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think. Stay strong, stay informed, get huge.